I am fortunate today to be able to spend a few minutes with Bishop Douglas Fisher of the uh, Episcopal Diocese of Western Mass. Thank you for uh, joining us. And, and uh, I wanted to talk to you specifically because we're connected on, on Facebook and I see a lot of what you um, put on Facebook and what the diocese puts on Facebook. And you talk a lot about the Jesus movement. And I want, you know, I don't know that that everybody would know what you mean, I guess, by that and what what the movement is all about and how that fits into your ministry. Sure. Um, you know, I really get that term from our presiding bishop, Michael Curry. Uh, he talks about the Jesus movement. And he has a very specific definition of it. He says, uh, we are the Jesus movement that's out to change the world from the nightmare it is for so many into the dream that God has for us. And I think that notion of movement and being engaged in the world is really important because sometimes people think of the faith as the, ch as the church building, you know, and, and I'm very grateful for all the people who take care of their church buildings. Um, but the church is not a building and the church is based on the faith of Jesus. Uh, but it's not just Jesus of 2000 years ago. It's Jesus who continues to be among us. And so it, it truly is an alive thing. It's, it's a movement. It's the, it's the spirit among us. Um, and it's not restricted to what we might think of as churchy things. It's really about changing the world into the, the dream that God has for it. So that we're meant to be a people who live with mercy and compassion and with hope. Uh, and I think that message is more important than any time. You know, just think about all the things we've been through in these past couple of years. You think sure. about the, the war in Ukraine. Um, to follow the Prince of Peace, not just as someone who lived long ago, but who still lives among us and wants the world to be at peace. So it's a very dynamic type of image. Sure, it's, it feels that way. And when I, when I read things that you write about it, it feels that way. If you were, and you, right now you have the opportunity, I guess, to invite people to join the, the Jesus movement or to learn more about it what would you suggest people do to take that first step if somebody's not involved with a, a church at all and, and maybe to, is, is willing, however, to explore ways to get closer to God? Yeah, I would I'd say that's a multifaceted, the multifaceted response to that. Um, one certainly is reading the scriptures, being involved in Bible study, um, spending some time uh, at prayer. And prayer can be as simple as just being centered and being quiet and just concentrating on your breath, you know, breathing in and breathing out. And it's something we take so for granted. And yet that's, that's God's life within us, that, that breathing. Um, then another thing I think that would be, would be especially important at this time is to practice being kind. Um, you know, it, that seems like a simple thing, but despite the tremendous heroism of healthcare workers in these last couple of years, despite how phenomenal school teachers have been during this really stressful time. It seems to me that America has become a, a crueler and meaner place. Um, I mean, you can see that in all kinds of statistics. Uh, sure. I read a thing the other day that there's, there's were more pedestrians killed by cars in the United States last year than any year in history. Uh, that's because we're all driving so aggressively. Um, you know, I know restaurant owners who have, have given their staff a day off, just closed the place down because the staff has been so stressed out by the way people treat them. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the, the reality of the original sin of racism in our country. Um, you know, we have school board meetings now where, where people shout at each other. Um, so could it be a way into the Jesus movement uh, is to model the kindness and compassion that was Jesus. And that would be something that would really be starkly different in our society right now. Yeah, it really would. And to find, uh, I, I think one of the things that we can do is to suggest to people that they find a, a church, find a church in, that might fit what they're looking for 
Exactly, exactly. You know, another part of that definition that Michael gives us of the Jesus movement, he says, for us in the Episcopal Church, we are the Episcopal branch of the Jesus movement. And there's a lot of branches of the Jesus movement, right? There's the Roman Catholics, there's Methodists, there's Baptists, there's all kinds of, of places for God's people to go. Um, and, to, and to recognize that can be, in terms of the Jesus movement, Christian faith, but it, people also find God in many different ways. There's many ways still one God. You know? And so um, in our diocese, we've got wonderful relationships with uh, Jewish leaders, with Islamic leaders, um, really uh, trying to model being brothers and sisters with one another in God. I've always felt there were many doors. Find, find the door that gets you to the room that you feel comfortable in. Exactly. In that's, that's exactly right. Um, and it's anything too, coming out of the pandemic, uh, I think we've all recognized uh, the great need that we have for community. Uh, you know, those were two years of being cut off from one another. Uh, and church is one of those ways that, to come together. And I think that uh, the people can be grateful and appreciate that. Um, I mean, an example I give in my own life, it's not about church, but it's about friendship, is that I've got a lot of high school buddies that went to uh, either St. John's University or to Georgetown. And for years, we would always go to the St. John's Georgetown basketball game in Madison Square Garden. And, uh, and in, in recent years, my life as a bishop, my schedule is kind of crazy, and, and I've missed it a couple of times, you know. And then during the pandemic, you simply couldn't go there. Um, right. Well, I'm determined never to again miss the St. John's Georgetown basketball game <laughs> with my friends. Uh, we just really need that sense of community. Yeah, you really do. You miss that. I, I miss the connection with friends more than anything else. Yeah, miss the connection. Well, thank you. I, I again, I, I've read a lot of your postings and 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 uh, Michael Curry's postings about the Jesus movement, but I wanted to hear a little bit more and be able to share that with people and be able to share how to look for a door, look for a door. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, the great thing about having Michael Curry as, as a leader in the Jesus movement is that I really think he's become the, the Billy Graham of our time. You know, there was a time when the people in the media, if they wanted to know what people of faith think about something, they go to Billy Graham. And he'd give them, you know, wonderful in-depth answers. Well, now they go to Michael Curry. I mean, Michael Curry is on all the morning talk shows. He's on NPR. He's on PBS. Um, and I can tell you that Michael Curry is the real deal. When he talks about the way of love, uh, he lives the way of love. So it's great to have Michael as our voice uh, at this time. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for being a voice today and uh, sharing uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, powerful messages with us so and it was nice uh, being able to talk with you in person more or thank less you. Thank, <laughs> thanks for this opportunity we'll, we'll keep praying for each other thank you all right and we'll be back